get ready to focus on the Egyptian landscape. That's the theme this week in Egypt. Stay tuned for all of the incredible details. Here comes this week's academic content. Remember, you can access the links that your child is using in class each day by referring to the small version of the newsletter. In math, we focused on rounding multi-digit whole numbers as well as multi-digit whole number addition and subtraction. In reading, we've worked on analyzing accounts of the same topic. We asked the question, what are plays made of? We looked at point of view and differentiated between first and third person. We looked at language and meaning. Grammar skills also got to work out with interjections and adjectives, as well as synonyms, antonyms, asking questions about key details, homographs, and idioms. We continue to work on memoirs, choosing a seed idea, and we are also expecting depth from our writing. With regard to spelling and phonics, we are working on initial and final consonant blends, the ID, IT, ND, ST endings, IE versus EI and US versus OUS, CK, TCH, and DGE endings, as well as NG, NK endings, and AUGHT versus OUGHT. Yes, science continues to be a huge focus in Egypt. This week we've been asking ourselves the questions What do plants eat? Where do fallen leaves go? Where does energy come from? Do worms really eat dirt? And why do you have to clean a fish tank, but not a pond? Yes, we will go deeper with our science excursions this week in Egypt. Incredible things are coming. Reading proficiency is more important than ever, and that's the reason why there's an article in this week's edition called Achieving Concentration. In this 21st century, with communication going constantly with emails, text messages, and so forth, it is of paramount importance that your child have reading proficiency. How can you help? Well, here are some suggestions. Develop children's oral language. Depending on the child's language skill level, give him a story to read or have a story read to him. When the story is finished, ask your child to pinpoint favorite parts of the story. This can enable your child to have fun picking out words and develop an interest to move to the next page. Read several stories every day. The more children are exposed to literature, the more reading will become part of their daily lives. Surround your child with reading material. Children with a large collection of reading resources in their homes score higher and perform better on standardized tests. Provoke a reading habit in your child by having a large array of interesting books and magazines at her reading level. Encourage a wide variety of reading activities. Make reading an essential part of your children's lives. Let them read menus, movie names, roadside signs, game guides, etc. Let them choose what they read. Reading for pleasure is one of the best ways for a child to improve his performance at school, but teaching a child to love reading involves a lot more than simply handing him a book. Show interest in your child's reading. Your response or feedback has a strong effect on how hard your child will try to become good, a good reader. Always remember to give him or her genuine praise for his or her efforts. Game by Zilpha Keatley Snyder continues this week, likewise with Literacy Corner and African Folktale Theater. Yes, your child is immersed in a number of read-alouds each and every day in Egypt. So how can you help your child improve his or her math fluency? You know, they always talk about whether or not you are fluent in another language, a second language. And if you think in that language, then you are considered to be fluent in that language. 
Math is important as well. You have to have math fluency. Now, we work on math every single day right here in Egypt. Achieving math fluency can also be furthered by continuing to work with your child at home on math fluency. For example, you can do the following things. Practice math at the grocery store while buying items. Using fractions while cooking or baking at home. Keeping math manipulatives on hand and engaging during playtime. Keep family games or play family games that include math. Building a daily or nightly routine that features frequent math practice. All of these things will help your child to achieve math fluency. It goes without saying that the more your child is immersed in math, the more fluent he or she becomes. Now, this topic will continue in next week's edition of Mr. McCoy's Summer Adventure Weekly Log, so be on the lookout for it. You are, needless to say, watching the video version, the YouTube version of Mr. McCoy's Summer Adventure Weekly Log. No doubt you've also seen the s'more version as well. In the event that last minute updates need to be included, always check out the s'more version for the latest information. I love the fact that you're watching this video version, but also check out the s'more version. It contains information that is similar to what is in the video version, but in some cases, it might even contain information that doesn't make the video. So check out both versions. We must keep the momentum going right up through and including the last day of summer adventure on Thursday, June 29. Your child will be academically charged every single day that he or she is at summer adventure. Also, you can follow your child's adventures by accessing our Twitter site. The link can be found in the small version of the newsletter. I attempt to take at least four pictures per day so that you can be right there with us as your child experiences the Egyptian adventures. Coming next week, it's issue four of Mr. McCoy's Summer Adventure Weekly Log. It's entitled Electrifying Egypt and will come your way for the week ending Friday, June 23, 2023. Be sure to tune in this video version, as well as this more version, of Mr. McCoy's Summer Adventure Weekly Log.